Thank you, Kathleen. Um, I'm very excited. Um, I would like to say that I'm really, really happy to be presenting this along Sam. I'm almost sure that, um, you know, most of the people attending today have already met him because he's like um, a Plex rock star, I will say. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> thank you very much, Sam, so, for being here. Like Millie Vanilli, I think. <laughs> Awesome. Um, so let's start. I mean, um, uh, we're going to be talking about uh, migrating to UX security and all of the um, challenges that it might uh, present. Um, I'm going to be talking more about the technical standpoint, and Sam is going to give us the insight from Batesville because they're actually going through their UX transition right now. Okay, so I'm going to move to the next slide here. Um, this is the, the, all of the topics that we're going to be talking about today. Um, first thing is going to be permissions that I think everyone that already has uh, classic know what permissions are, but we're going to go through that. Uh, we're going to go through the actions, which are the new permissions from UX or the equivalent of the permissions. Um, we're going to go through the security roles, and that's going to be our main focus today. This is going to be the, the heaviest part of the presentation. We're going to talk about the role-based menus, um, IP access controls, and privileged conflicts, uh, very known as uh, segregation of duties. All right, so I'm going to go to the next slide. Um, permissions. Um, the main difference in permissions from UX and Classic is that we cannot longer assign permissions to directly to the users in UX. They have they have to be assigned to a role. Um, many of the permissions have been retired. So that means that from the whole amount of the permissions, I think we only have uh, 50 of them available right now. Um, and those are going to be phased out. So that means that eventually we're going to live in a world where permissions no, no longer exist. We're going to be using um, only actions. Uh, custom permissions can only can still be created in UX. Um, if you created a permission, you know, to um, set security on a setup table, for example, which I know some you use a lot of those, <laughs> we can still do that. All right. So actions, and this is the new um, equivalent of a. Uh, of a permission, the actions decide what access uh, everybody has. Um, and these ones are not available until you assign them to a security role. So that means that um, there's no longer the possibility of, um, you know, when, when you switch from one user to another and you only assign the permission to one user, it can be kind of confusing. And instead, you have to assign them to security roles now. Um, there are more options for restricting, restricting security on the system. Um, the equivalent of actions to permissions, it's more or less six to one. So that means that before you can assign a permission to access a screen, and now that um, permission is being replaced by six actions. So if I'm giving access to the part list, for example, um, there was like a part that, part of date. Now we have a lot of different action types, which I'm going to present in the next slide. This is all of the different types of actions that we have. And all of them grant different kinds of access. Uh, we still have some of them, like on the permissions where we have the add, um, or we have, for example, the uploads, but there are a lot of them that are new. So instead of uh, assigning one permission, we can divide that kind of access. The most common ones, it's the grid. Um, grid basically is giving access to the screen. Um, in classic before, we used to just um, assign the screen to the menu node for the user. And now, instead of doing that or moving the menu nodes, um, we are giving grid action type permissions. There's also permissions like 
um, export. Almost all of the screens now have exports, um, which is kind of great. I think that's a really cool feature. Um, we can also restrict uh, delete, but that has always been the case. Uh, we can give access to print or to the wizards, like the quote log, for example, or engineering change requests. Okay, um, I think I've said this <laughs> before a couple of times already, but in UX, uh, you must use security roles because this is the way. And I'm almost sure um, Sam or very own Star Wars geek loves this meme. <laughs> I didn't come up with that slide, you did. <laughs> I know. Well, actually, it was Marty. I don't know if you people know Marty's stats. Uh, you know, another big Star Wars fan. Okay. So uh, how to build a role in UX? Um, we have to assign actions and non-retired permissions. Uh, retired permissions are the permissions that have been uh, phased out and they're no longer have use in UX. Users can be directly assigned to security roles. That's one option. Another option too is we can assign positions to the security roles. So we're gonna talk about that more in a second. Okay, um, I think this slide is really important. This is kind of the um, a list of all of the uh, challenges or decisions that we have to make um, on how we're going to design our security roles. Um, I'm going to list every one of them, and then um, you know we will ask Sam from his input on how difficult was that decision, or you know what what input does he have on his personal experience on that. Um, Try to mimic classic security roles or rethink role structures for UX. So, um, Sam, do you remember um, if we were trying to mimic the roles that you currently have or we just start from scratch? Um, I won't say we we're trying to mimic them. Um, back years ago, we migrated in Classic from just permissions onto people to roles and then roles on positions. During that process, I think we overdid it. I ended up with two or 300 security roles and it worked great, but it was a little cumbersome. So we we wanted to keep the roles. We wanted to do roles to positions, but we did rethink them a little bit. Back in Classic, we did a role by a action or by a job function, like um, add a part or ship a shipment, um, things like that. Where this, we went to UX, we kind of decided we're going to, create the roles more wrapped around either you're an admin of the area, you're the highest person, or you're the lowest person that gets basic access, but the meat of it's in between with the roles, and those are more designed around positions, like we have an AR clerk, an AP clerk, or a customer service rep, and not, you try to get so granular, it's like, oh, you can add a customer, you can schedule a shipment, you can modify a shipment, that type of thing. So we started with our classic base, but I knew you know we went way overboard and went way too granular on it and had to back up a little bit, I think. So, so yeah, far, I, it's worked out pretty good for us. I think you took the right decision on there because they, they were really um, granular. I, I remember um, maybe there were some of just for the dropdowns or the um, or the setup tables, right? So we. we, we we started getting roles that were one-to-one, -one, a role to our permission. And I knew that was probably a mistake when I started getting, creating those. <laughs> you know, that, that's cool. You know, it's, it's all experience and I'm, I'm glad that it's working better now. Um, so the next thing on the list will be to change or standardize security role naming conventions. Um, um, one thing we did in Classic, I, we got a pretty standard name. Um, we started with, we use roles for various things, like Carlos said, the drop downs, where some of them are drop downs on screens. We use a lot of workflows and we have a lot of roles in there. So we kind of prefixed our roles with either it's security, it's a role for Plex security, or it's a role for um, workflow or a role for a drop down. So we kind of prefixed them with that. 
and followed a very structured naming standard. So they kind of sort together too. So all my accounting roles will sort together. All my um, other ones will sort together. A little more organized and easier to read. But we did come up with a very standard name and trying not to get too um, too specific in them. Yep. Um, and I remember one good strategy that um, we took when we were beginning to create the roles for UX was add UX at the beginning of them so we could differentiate them. Um, the, the UX one from the classic ones, uh, which I think it was a really good idea. Um, I don't know if, if people that are listening to us know, but um, UX and classic are affecting the same database. So when you add a role on UX and you add a role on classic, um, the roles are on the same place, right? They're on the same, uh, start on the same place in Plex. So um, it's kind of a good idea to add a UX or something to differentiate there that this is the UX role, not the classic one. Um, eliminate or reduce permission-based security roles. Um, well, we, we, I think we haven't got to that phase yet uh, with you, Sam, because really we can't delete them yet. Um, our first departments are about to get transitioned. Um, so we really can't just go and delete the the, um, the roles or they won't have access in Classic. Yeah, we don't have a lot of those. I mean, we we're, the permissions are gone, a lot of the permissions, so there's less of those. The um, define functional role hierarchies. So with functional, uh, we're referring to um, AP clerk, shipping manager, you know, the roles that are more uh, um, linked to the function or the position that the user uh, does in, on the company. Um, how do we map those, do you remember? Yeah, uh, you actually got a couple slides down that kind of go different ways. Mm -hmm. What we ended up with was three levels for each area, like accounting, HR, sales, shipping, and we define a level one, which was our champion, which we gave probably 90% of the access to everything in that area to the level one. You know, I took away a lot of the delete functionality from people unless they specifically needed it. But mm -hmm. um, we created that level one. And then that's our top level. And I'll jump to a level three, which was our bottom level, which was just basic access. So anybody that works in that department gets at least level three, which will get them to view whatever they need that everybody in that department needs to be to kind of generalize access for that whole department like a read only kind of thing right the level three yeah okay um and yeah and we're we're going to talk about that more on the next slides as you were saying because uh, there's several options that we can uh, use and we're not restricted like you have to do this or the other you can use like a mix of them we're, it's really interesting and i think it's really cool we're going to talk more about that um then there's common actions or common roles, like for example, um, um, inventory, you know, or HR, like document control system. Um, everybody uses that, right? So um, we're going to talk more about that on this on the slides too. Uh, but the, we have we do have roles like that, right, Sam? Uh, where it's just yeah. like yes, okay. Um, deciding where the role position linking will be used. Um, I really think that if you're using that in Classic, you can pretty much do that in UX as well. Uh, and that's what we did, right? Yeah, we link all the roles to positions and then that hopefully continues to take off some load from MIS that HR, when they hire a person and assign the position, it gets all the security. Or if somebody changes departments, when they change them in HR, they change all the security. That was the main reason for that. and generalized so we don't have to put roles on you know a hundred operators we just put it on position for operator and all 100 operators get it automatically um, that was a really good decision i think in the hr area you can have additional positions which we have done that before um, all of our employees here have an additional position called an employee because we have contract workers that don't work for us and we have employees well there some of the security is different for contract workers they don't have access to our employee manual 
and we actually have our contract worker supplier send in their employee manual. We have it in Plex, so the contract workers can see their staffing company's employee manual, but our employees can't. We broke some things like that. Um, broke a few other things with like a manager. Everything that a manager has is assigned to the manager positions. So a few different levels there. But it's made managing security much easier because we set it up by position and HR takes it over from there. Yeah, that's cool, right? You, you don't have to uh, get your phone bossing every time someone's hired. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. All right, so we're going to continue here. Okay, so this is more detail of something that we thought on, uh, where we talked about on the previous slide. Um, so this is pretty much how do we define the hierarchy of the roles, right? Um, yeah. Pretty much option one and two are the same. It's just the naming that you give them. You know, like you can have accounting level high, mid, low, or just uh, read only or the access. Um, you can rename that as three, two, one if it. Uh, you know, makes it simpler for you. That's the option that we uh, chose for Batesville. Um, you can also name the role as a position. Um, um, so yeah, those are the those are the three options uh, there. Um, we have kind of a mixture here because, yeah, for example, yeah, of option two and three because I can remember, for example, level two that is. Um, for example, you don't want to give the same access from for accounts payable to accounts receivable, and level one is accounting, right? Like the whole finance module group. Um, so really, we have to divide those level twos by uh, functional areas. Um, yeah, we divided our accounting two by basically a position, like AR, AP, um, senior okay. account things yeah. like that and kept them separate. So we have like an accounting level one, we have three accounting level twos and one accounting level three role. Okay. Um, all of these different slides that we're gonna present that have the two or three options in them, um, they're not uh, rigid. So you can choose to do like a hybrid between option two and three. Um, for people that are watching us. You don't have to decide between one and the other and just leave it like that. Um, okay, so this is about the amount of permissions that a role have. So we went with option number two in this case. So we added all of the permissions um, from the functional area to the role, instead of having um, three roles that don't share any permissions at all. So what, I, what I'm trying to explain here is, um, in our case, the level one had everything on it, level two had maybe 60% of all of the permissions available, and level three maybe have 30% of it. Um, whether uh, option number one here refers to adding you know, 30% to each one of them. Um, so they don't share permissions with each other. Um, it's another option. Um, I personally think, and I don't know if you share that with me, Sam, that this was kind of more difficult to um, like audit, you know, that they were not sharing permissions within each other. And I think that's where we went with option number two. Yeah. Yeah, it was, I mean, you can go either way, just what your personal preference is and what fits your company. Um, so far, like we've done about three areas set up like this. So, so far, we haven't hit any roadblocks, any issues with it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I will say like pros of option um, number one is that when you decide that you're going to give access to all of the levels of to one permission, um, you do it just one, right? And with the other option, yeah. you have to do it for every one of the roles. Yeah. Um, kind of went on it that you know the manager should have access to everything of the people below him in the hierarchy tree. Yeah. So. Okay, and then we have the 
um, common action roles. So this is something that everybody uses. In this case, we're using inventory, but you can picture this as um, human resources or document control system. So really we have two options. Either you assign that to every role um, or you create a role with all of the inventory actions and you just assign it. Um, I think we went with option number two for this. Uh, we sign, yeah, we assign the actions to an individual role, and then we assign that role. We have some MIS or fake positions, like, um, like I said, um, employee, or we actually have a physical inventory position that then we assign to different people because we don't, every plant manager does not participate in our physical in inventory, just one or two of them. And the same with our group leaders and our different operators. We have select ones that are really good that we bring in. And those individual people get the additional position of, oh, I'm an inventory taker. So they get that responsibility once a year. So we could assign that position directly to those people without giving it to everybody in that position at that level. Yeah, and I, and I think that was a good idea because let's say you want to give the action of retiring a container out of the role, you do it with just one, you don't have to go to every one of the um, roles and taking that permission out, right? So it's, uh, yeah, I think that was a good decision there. Um, you know, however, you know, whatever option is best for your company, um, that works. So this is the other option of linking the uh, position to the user. I really like um, that option, um, and I think you agree. Um, yeah. But either if you're not doing that, um, we can assign uh, more than one role directly to the user. We have no restrictions. So whether you decide to um, use the position or not, the main advantage of using it is that when HR assigns a position to um, an employee, they inherit all of the permissions. Or if they change positions, they inherit the new positions again. So um, mm -hmm. that really saves a lot of time for the Plex administrator. Yeah, yeah, I really like the positions, doing the roles by position, It it's great. Yeah, um, I will personally share that every customer uh, we deploy, I try to do it that way. Um, unless you're not using the employee list, right? Then there's no case. But um, if you're using it, I would say go with security roles by positions. Um, okay, so role based menus. Um, there's no menu nodes in UX. So when you assign a grid action type to a role, the persons that have that role will have access to that screen and they will see their menu on the plex of the box um i will call it like the branches so the different folders um however you can still create role-based menus and um this is cool because this is the only way that you can add um bp screens to that role-based menu um we haven't gone through that um on Bates build yet. And I really think that's because we want to focus on um, the other tasks that we have with the transition before doing this, because this is more like a nice to have, right? I don't think you really need it um, to transition, although it's a really cool tool. Yeah, yeah, we haven't addressed this, like Carlos said. One thing that's um, been a little tough for my people to swallow, but I think I really like it and may steer me away from this a little bit is very standard menus of where things are. I can't imagine Plex dealing with 600 customers and their own custom menus. Hell, I can't deal with my people that make their favorites and figure out what they're talking about sometimes. So I'm not sure how much we'll go down the rule base screen, but we will look at it at least. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess we, you can do a rule base for the reports, right? Maybe. Yeah. Um, and other reports in there. Um, also, I will say navigation in UX is awesome because you have your history and your favorites and you have the search bar. Um, so really the role-based menus, I mean, they're great, but they require an effort to build them. And I think you just really get used to the other options really quick. Okay. 
Uh, next thing, assigning IP access controls in UX. Um, this is cool because um, every application, you can assign an IP address to it. So for example, maybe ma more like manager positions, you're okay with them working from home, especially with the current circumstances, right? Uh, but maybe you don't want anyone logging into control panel if they're not logging into your Wi-Fi or your your IP address, right? So this is the way to do it. Um, and it's really simple. You just choose uh, one or several IP addresses by application. And the application is the equivalent of the screen, right? So on the example here, you can see um, the application is receiving and you can assign an IP address or addresses to receiving. You can do it with shipping, um, cycle counting, um, control panel, pretty much every application on the system can be uh, linked in like this. And last thing on the list will be the privilege conflicts. Um, there is um, audits that require you to have um, segregation of duties. Um, for example, I don't know, maybe whoever creates a supplier um, can't pay the supplier, right? Um, you need to have several people doing that. Um, this is a pretty cool tool in um, UX. Unfortunately, on Batesville, we haven't used this yet. We haven't get there uh, on their process. Um, but this one is really cool because when assigning a role to a person, Plex can give you a notification that there's um, conflict um, if you previously establish um, what actions are not compatible with each other. Um, this is a really cool tool as well. Um, I know uh, more than, I don't know, maybe two or three customers that are using this already. Um, so if you have this kind of um, audits, I think this is a really good option to look through. Um, it's called privilege conflicts. Uh, or security role privilege groups. And that, I think, will be the end of their presentation. Um, thank you, everybody, for listening. And I don't know if you have any questions. Uh, please feel free. Thanks, thanks, Sam and Carlos, for that presentation. Um, I think, you know, security is one of those things that no one really likes to spend time on. But, uh, it's a very important area. Um, I do think we have a couple of polling questions here that we'll do before we do have some questions as well, but we'll start with these, these polling questions. So if you guys will all take a moment to answer this um, polling question. Okay, let's go ahead and see what those results are. So it's the question was UX security is the main reason why we haven't pursued a UX transition. And um, luckily that it looks like only 38% 38, uh, 38 of you disagree. So that's good. That's not the reason that um, it's stopping you. But there are some, uh, a total of 38% between the strongly agree and agree. So hopefully this presentation helps maybe get you over some of those fears. I think we have uh, one other polling question. No, we don't have any more polling questions, Kathleen. Okay, okay great. Then we'll go into, we do have a few questions um, from some of the attendees, Sam and Carlos. Let's see. Um, it says actions seem to be a bit confusing. Can you tell us what the difference between assigning read versus grid versus dialogue versus form is? Yes. Um, imagine that for every uh, permission, you will have um, six or more actions. And it's not always going to be that case. But, you know, there have, there's been some permissions that are like, um, I don't know, um, accounts payable super user. I'm, I'm minting this permission, but there's some of them that are like that. Um, instead of that in, in, in UX, when you have actions that replace those permissions, you will have maybe four of them because you will have 
add, update, delete, and grid are like the most um, common ones. So grid will give you access to the screen. Um, add will give you access to add a record to it. Um, delete will give you access to delete the record. And uh, update will give you access to um, make updates of records that currently exist there. Um, there's also some other action types like um, export, right? So maybe there was a screens before that didn't have an export on them. And now we do have exports, but maybe we don't want anyone doing that export. So we get that action. Um, there's an action bar in Plex. It's like a blue ribbon and you have different buttons on there. Um, almost all of the different action types correlate to a different option that you can choose on the action bar, um, like print or export or add or edit. Okay, great. Um, so the next question is, can you create a role menu if a user has multiple roles assigned? Yes, the role menu is linked to the role. Um, if they have different roles and every one of those roles has a role-based menu, um, they will see different menus, one for each of the roles that they have. Okay. Um, in UX, the reports menu list, all reports that are checked to be made available. Does that mean anyone who has the reports menu in their role sees all of them by default? Is there any way to control who has access to selective reports? I think that's an awesome question and there's a really great answer to that. Um, when you make a report available in UX, um, the action to see that report is now available to assign it to different roles. Um, so every time you create or to make available a new role, you have to go through the security roles manager and assign what roles can use that um, report. If you're the, the security auditor, that is the, the role in Plex that gives you access to everything, you will not notice this because by having all of the actions and permissions, um, you will see it either way. So it's sometimes tricky that, you know, you activate the report and then you find out the user can't see it. Um, so you just have to remember to assign that to a security role. Okay, great. Um, and then one last question, it's do the permissions that can be applied in setup tables still work? Yes. Um, actually, yes and no. Um, if that was a permission that um, you created on your PCN, um, then the answer is yes. If you're using an existing permission, you have to check that it hasn't been retired. With retired, it means that it has been replaced by actions. If that's the case, then it will not work. Okay, and you'd have to find another permission in order to control it. 